Welcome once again to The Step of Truth. I'm John Furnish, your Bible teacher. I hope you've been enjoying the last two programs on the blood that we've been doing. And, and once again, we're going to still talk about the blood, uh, how it's shed, um, what it means to us, and, and also um, how we can apply the blood. I pray that we can get through that today. Um, but I want to start out in uh, Colossians in the New Testament uh, in chapter 1. And we're talking about the blood and, and how it, it pertains to covering our sins. Um, it takes uh, what once was wrath of God that was coming our ways because of our disobedience, our rebellion against God, when we were enemies to God, that through what Christ has done and our faith in Christ through the blood that he shed for us for the remission of sin, that we now can live in the blessings of God and in peace with God and not be in rebellion against. Um, and verse 9 of chapter 1 of Colossians, it starts, For this reason we also, since the day we heard, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you be uh, filled with the knowledge of His will and the wisdom and spirit understanding that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing Him and being fruitful in every good work, uh, increasing in the knowledge of God, uh, strengthened with all might and according to his glorious power for all patience and long suffering and with joy. Um, so here he's not he's telling us after the blood has been applied, we, we cease not to 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 quit praying for one another. Um, we keep seeking after the knowledge of God. Not just any knowledge, but the knowledge of God to be strengthened in his in his glory, to be strengthened in his power, uh, to um, have patience. Uh, that's something <laughs> you don't have to pray for. Uh, the world's going to make you have patience. Um, we're long suffering, but with joy, uh, even though we may be going through trials or tribulations that come in our direction, we can do it in joy in the power of knowledge of knowing God. And if you don't know God that well, then it's not as personal as it should be. You should be closer. Um, the old saying that you can have just as much Jesus as you want is true. It is up to you to seek after him. He is there. He's waiting for you. He's waiting for me. He wants to give us knowledge. If we just take the time to spend in his word, after all, the word is Christ. Uh, he, the word became flesh and dwelled among us. Uh, and the word is, is the Bible that we have today. And it, but it's, it's also, we can have those personal times with him. And it's all because of the blood that he shed, the obedience that he had to the Father, the follow the plan that was set up before the foundations of the world. And now we're living in the glory of it. And so we have this through the blood. It's that important to us. And we should never forget of that importance. Now, let's go to Hebrews chapter 10. <clears throat> and I want to start with verse 19 and go to verse 29. Uh, Therefore, brethren, have boldness in to enter the holiness by the blood of Jesus. You see, in the Old Testament, there was only once a year, the high priest only, that could go into the Holy of Holies in the, in the temple. Okay, but now, through the blood of Christ, you and I can enter into the Holy of Holies and meet with God Himself in our prayer times. We can walk with Him, talk with Him, and, and have communion with Him in the sense of, one-on-one, -on -one, not, not, I'm not talking about the communion of, of the bread and the juice. I'm talking about the communion of communicating with him through our prayer. It is through the blood of Christ that opened up that curtain, that door that says, come on in. You're one of my kids. I see the blood of Christ on you. Enter in and, and, and know that it is well. You do not have to have 
fear of being afraid or dying because you do. And it was taught in the Old Testament that if you came into, you know, in the sight of God, uh, we, our flesh couldn't stand it and we would, we would die. Where now we have access through the blood of Christ uh, by a new and living way, which he consecrated for us through the veil. That's what I'm talking about. That is his flesh. In other words, his Jesus flesh was tore uh, as he was scourged uh, before he went to the cross. But he was shedding his blood even then for us. And he shed his blood for us on the cross. Now, uh, now having a high priest over the house of God. Now, this is not a, a Aaron priesthood, a lineage of his. This is Christ himself we're talking about. Let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from the evil conscience and our bodies washed with the pure water. Now here he's talking about that it is now that we have accepted Christ as our as our personal Savior, we have uh, faith in that His blood has has reconciled us to the Lord. Um, that we have this High Priest; His name is Jesus. Uh, that is now over the house of God. He is the head of the church, and we are being washed with pure water—the pure water of the Word. We follow in baptism. And have the water either we are immersed or, or in some cases sprinkled. Uh, I, I think it's more important that we know why we're doing it than the, than the means that we're doing it in. Uh, sometimes it's not able to, you know, the thief on the cross that accepted Jesus didn't get down off the cross and go get baptized and then crawl back up on the cross. You know, so I think it's more of the spiritual side of it. The New Testament is more of a spiritual side of what was told us in the Old Testament. I think it's important to be submerged. I teach submersion, but I want you to know why you're doing it more than that. You're showing the death of Christ and you identify with that and you're raised with him. Uh, but we are being washed uh, by the word on the inside now. Now let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering for he who promised is faithful. In other words, our profession of Jesus Christ is God, that he is the king, that he is my Lord, and that he has saved me. If we keep that profession, that confession, uh, he is faithful to keep his promise of salvation. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and works. In other words, just in, in a sense, just because I made it, I can't just say, well, tough luck. I made it. You get there on your own. We are to encourage one another to, to come to Christ, to stay in Christ, to learn more about Christ and to you know, continue that knowledge of him and living in him. Uh, not forsaking of the assembly or, ourselves together it is a matter of some, but exhorting one another so much as more as you see the day approaching. For if we were, if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sin. Now, if we walk away from Christ, and we can do that. It's not once saved, always saved, and then you do whatever you want to. It is a matter of staying in Christ. Do, do each of us at times sin after we're saved? Yes. But we, are, we have that, that person, that Christ, that we can go to and, and admit our fault, admit our sin, and ask for forgiveness, and we're back in line again. Okay? Okay. Uh, he is the only sacrifice for that. His blood is the only, only shed blood for that. Now, verse 27, but this certain fearful expect, expectation of judgment and fiery damning uh, indignation, um, which will devour the adversary, 
Anyone who has rejected Moses' law without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. How much um, worse punished to those who he be thought worthy who was trampled the son of God underfoot, accounting the blood of the covenant for which he was sanctified, a common thing and insulted the spirit of grace, the spirit of grace of the Holy Spirit. Now, what he's talking about is someone who, who was willing to follow Christ and then decided to uh, denounce that, to, to not uh, accept Christ anymore, to walk away from Christ. I want you to understand, God will never force you away. But he also will not force you to stay. That decision will always be yours. But he's telling us here that if under Moses' law, two or three witnesses could condemn someone, how much more the you'd be condemned with the Holy Spirit. Well, we don't want you to see that. We don't want you to do that, but we want you to know that it's possible. But it's through the blood that we still have a faithful God that's willing to forgive even when we've made mistakes. His door is always open to us. It is always willing to forgive, but we have to be willing to repent of what we've done wrong. And it's through the blood of Christ that we can be covered. Now, uh, let's go on to chapter 13 here in Hebrew. In Hebrews, I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, I'm going to pick out a couple verses here. Verse 12 is one of them. Uh, Therefore, Jesus said that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered outside of the gate. I want you to understand the sin offering was sacrificed. It was killed outside of the gates of the city. And there was, you know, the blood was was brought into into the city, but not that. It was burned outside. That is the sin offering. That's what that's what he was showing us with the sin offering in the Old Testament, that that was that he would be uh, killed outside of the city. Um, and then I want, I want to go to verse 20. Uh, now may the God of peace who brought up our Lord Jesus from the dead, that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant, Make you complete in every good works to do his will, working in you what is well pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. So, so God, the proof of all that we're saying here is the resurrection. And that's what he's talking about. He raised Jesus from the dead after he shed his blood. This great shepherd, Jesus was raised again, and it was through the blood of the everlasting covenant. This covenant will never pass away. The Old Testament covenant with Moses and Abraham and and those up to the time that Jesus came on the scene and initiated through his sacrifice, the shedding of his blood, and set the new covenant in the place. And this covenant will not pass away as the old covenant did, but will last forever. Now, let's go to 1 Peter. I'm going to go to 1 Peter chapter 1. And I'm going to start with verse 18. Uh, Know thou that you were not redeemed by corruptible things, like silver and gold, from your uh, aimless conduct, receiving the traditions from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Jesus as the lamb without blemish and without spot. So here we see that he is the in, you know, that it's not with the corruptible, you know, it's pure, 
We're talking about the blood of Jesus as being pure. It's not uh, adulterated with other stuff being added to it. It is pure. It, he was a lamb without blemish. You see the last week of Jesus' life when he was in Jerusalem, the triumphantly entered and, the, and, the, and those seven days there, he was being watched to prove that he was without blemish, that there was no defects. That was why it was so important for the lamb, the Passover lamb to be without blemish, without any defects, so that it was the perfect uh, example of the sacrifice that Jesus was going to be giving at this time. And he gave it willingly. Verse 20, he indeed was foreordained before the foundation of the world and was manifested in his last times for you, who through him believed in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are in God. So from the foundation of the world, Jesus already knew what his job was, what he was going to have to endure, that he was going to have to shed his blood because only his blood would have been the perfect sacrifice, the perfect cost of all the sins in the world. And for you and I to accept that, to accept his sacrifice, to live for him because he rose from the grave, Paul tells us the best way, and that is, it's not I that live, but Christ in me that lives. In other words, Christ living through us. We, we can go back to, the, we need to know the knowledge of God more and more so that we can live for him so that the perfect sacrifice of his blood is is even more holier than what it really was at the beginning. And we do that by our actions. We don't trot it under feet. You know, it tells us not to trot the, the blood under the foot. That's why in, in the first Passover, it was on the side post and over the, the lintel, over the top of the door, and not on the, on the floor because you don't walk on the blood of Jesus. We re, we. Uh, must continue to see it as something holy and not just something, you know? First um, John. We're going to look at chapter 5 of First John chapter 5. And I'm going to start with verse 6. And we're talking about God's witness, certain witness. This, verse 6, this is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not only by water, but by water and blood. It is the spirit who bears witness because the truth is in it. It's important for us to know that it came by blood and water. When we are born into this world, it is through blood and water that 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 is a part of that process. OK, so he's making the point here that he is man but he's also God. Verse 7, For there are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. Here it tells us very plainly that God the Father, the Word, or Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit are one. It's that triune God that we're talking about. Verse 8, and there are three that bear witness on the earth, the spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree are one. So we have three witnesses uh, on both sides of this. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit on the spirit side of it. But here it is the water, the spirit, and the blood that bears witness of these things that are true about Christ Jesus. Okay? Now, I want you to go to Revelations chapter 1. Revelations chapter 1. And I want to start with verse 5 and go through verse 8. 
Uh, let's, let's, um, let's start four. Uh, John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, uh, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before the throne. Seven is a complete number, a whole number that, that speaks of the Holy Spirit as being whole. Uh, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead and the ruler over the kings of the earth to him who loves us and washed us from our sins with his own blood and has made us kings, priests to his God and father to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So here we see again that he's talking about. Jesus was that faithful witness to the plan that God had for our lives of salvation. That he was the firstborn of the dead. And he ruled over the kings of the earth. Now, because of his obedience, because he was willing to die for us, he was willing to shed his blood for us. And he loves us and washes us with his word. Washes us from our sins. In his own blood, he covers those things up and he's made us kings and priests. Wow. Do you know you're somebody in Christ? You are. Chapter five of Revelations. Chapter five, verse nine. And they sang a new song saying, you are worthy to take the scrolls and to open his seals for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nations and have made us uh, kings and priests of our God and we shall reign on the earth. So uh, this song is worthy of the lamb because of what he did, of everything he's done. He is able to uh, set us free from our sins. Uh, chapter 7, verse 14. And I said to him, Sir, you know. So he said to me, These are the ones who come out of great tribulation and washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Again, it is about the blood of the Lamb that takes away the sin, that redeems us. And we do that by faith. I want to come now to verse chapter 12. And this is an important verse that we all should be able to say and need to know. Um, and they overcame him. Talking about all of us. They overcame him and him is, is Satan and his, and his troops by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to death. Talk, mainly it's talking about the tribulation saints, but it's also we need to take an account how much God loves us and what are we willing to do for him? Are we willing to be a living sacrifice that God has called us out to be? If they hated Jesus, they're going to hate us and we are living sacrifices. But we need to stand in the blood of Christ and the testimony that we have of Christ in our lives. Our testimony is the great things that, that Christ has done in our lives, not only to save us, not only to shed his blood for us, but for the life that he has given us. We give him glory and testify of him day in and day out. Now, uh, to end up this study in the last few minutes that I have, we talk many times about, especially Pentecostal, about pleading the blood on things. OK, um, uh, today I plead the blood on this program uh, and, and to ask, you, how do we do that? What am I saying? Well, it's simply saying, God, I trust you. And in prayer, uh, I, I place your provision, your protection. And I do it in faith that you will take care of of my needs. You know, we leave that in God's will, but we also, it's okay to, you know, the plead the blood over our lives, over our family, over our children, over our churches, 
even over our business, uh, it is uh, saying, Lord, and in a sense, what we're saying is because I have faith in Jesus Christ. I have faith that in the shed blood that he had shed for us freely, willingly, that I trust you that much that I am putting you over all that I have. And when we do that, even on a daily basis, God will provide for us. He will be perfect because it's his. We've given it back to him in a sense. And it's his already. But you and I need to understand that we're doing those things in a sense. Uh, we plead the blood over our homes. Uh, we can bleed the blood over our car. Uh, but, and, and it's, as we may think of that as being a common thing or, or, or taking down that, but no, it is lifting up. It is glorifying God through his son, Jesus, through the blood, and that the Holy Spirit is going to do these things because of our faith in Christ Jesus and what he did for us and accomplished for us. The blessings that we have would not be ours if it was not for the shedding of the blood of Christ in our lives for you and I. And again, I want you to understand it was an innocent life without sin, willing to be obedient to God's work and his plan to save you and me. And he did it willingly. It's free to us, but he paid his life. He gave it all. I ask you today, knowing that, are you willing to give it all? Have you thought about how much you want to give? Are you willing to give your life over to Christ and to live it for him? We're not asking you to give your life up and to die though that may be called of some as a, as a martyr. But what he really wants is you to live for him, be a priest for him, and be a king. Now, we do that under the anointing. And, and I'm, I'm leading you into next week's program about the anointing. And come, come and listen next week. We ask this in Jesus' name. God bless you, and I plead the blood over your life.